The Nashville Predators open up the 2023 calendar year-end schedule, and John Hines deploys his blendered lines in the following way. Back at Bridgestone Arena, it's going to be Forsberg, Parson, and Sissons on your first line. Jankowski back in the lineup. Good to see. Was worried after he took the hit to the head against the Vegas Golden Knights. Johansson and Duchesne make up the rest of your second line. Need a rider, Glass, and Granlin have found some chemistry and are still together in this game. Trennan, Novak, and Janot make up your fourth line. McDonough and Yossi Ekholm and Carrier lose on, and McHugh and Fabro a healthy scratch in this game. We'll talk about that a little bit more later. UC Saros gets the first start of the calendar year at home against the Montreal Canadiens. We're just 48 seconds into the game at Bridgestone Arena. UC Saros comes up with a save on Savard. It's the first shot of the game. 158 of the first period. Montebo comes up with a save on McDonough. It's the first shot on goal for the Nashville. Predators at 232. We see Edmondson go off to the box. Two minutes for delay of game. That's where Glass converts for the Nashville Predators. His third goal of the season giving the Preds a 1-0 lead. It was a deflection of a high Ekholm shot in the low slot, reviewed for a significant amount of time for potential high stick, upheld to be a good goal. Really great hand-eye coordination by Glass right here, going to the hard areas and getting reward predators with a 1-0 lead. But at 549 of the first period, Colton Sissons makes it 2 nothing with his fifth goal of the season. It was Forsberg's incredible sauce pass over to Sissons at the back post that made this goal happen. Colton Sissons crashing hard, cashing in. Fifth goal of the season, the Preds a 2 0 lead, just 549 into the first period on home ice. 759 of the first period. Saros comes up with a save on Caulfield with the pad, stretched it all the way out to the back post. Really a five star save right here to see the flexibility and the quickness of UC Saros and the edge work to be able to push over as quickly as he did. Glass is going to go off to the box two minutes for tripping on Caulfield at the same time as Caulfield was getting that scoring opportunity. That's going to put Gallagher in the box on this power play. He's going to go off two minutes for high sticking on Jankowski. That puts us in a four on four scenario for a minute and 18 seconds. And then Matthias Ekholm would score on the very, very end of the power play that the National Predators would get after the four on four. His third goal of the season it was a long shot off of the D stick. As a matter of fact, it was a perfect deflection, but you have to give Glass credit because he was not just flying by the top of the net, but he was looking for a redirect as well. As a matter of fact, he had to take several looks at the slow-mo and the super slow-mo from different angles to see if it was Glass or the defenseman stick that deflected turns out to be the defenseman stick Ekholm awarded the goal his third of the season in the national purse third goal of the game 12 29 of the first period Soros comes up with a save on docks redirect and rebound follow-up jam opportunity really good strong save by UC Soros 14 32 Montebo comes with a save on carry he was also crashing the net hard that led to a large scrum and that led to Sissons and Weidman heading off to the box for two minutes apiece which is going to give us a four on four scenario nothing would come of that situation. 1911 of the first period. Caulfield's 22nd goal comes on a partial breakaway after Carrier got a little too deep in the zone. This leads to a turnover. Forsberg just no match to keep up with Caulfield on this play, and he cashes in 22nd goal of the season, beating UC Soros easily. 3-1 to one in favor of the Nashville Predators here at the end of the first period. Shots on goal are tied at 15 apiece. Seemed like the Nashville Predators were dominating the first period, but the shots on goal end up being completely even score. 3-1. to one. Fresh sheet of ice for the second period. 347 in. Saros comes with a save on Caulfield at close range. 405 of the second period. Nita Ryder hits the post. And at 640, Anderson's 10th goal of the season cuts the Nashville Purrs lead to only one. 3 to 2 now in favor of the Nashville Purrs. It was a soft goal off of UC Saros' glove and in. Saros saw it all the way in. No traffic in front. It goes off the tip of the glove and then scrolls in behind Saros and into the net. Nashville Purrs give up a soft one right here. At 818, Tommy Nova. Novak's getting that goal right back with his third goal of the season. Trend and speed from below the goal line to the low circle gives Novak a great scoring opportunity. He converts, giving the Preds their fourth goal of the game and restoring that two-goal lead. Preds now in front 4-2. to two. At 10.30 of the second period, Doc hits the post after a turnover by the Nashville Predators attempting to clear the zone. 12.48 of the second period, McDonough's off the box. Two minutes for holding a strong PK. Trend, as a matter of fact, steals the puck behind the net as it was left completely unattended and almost tucks the puck. And then I call that some short handed jam right there. 1748 though of the second period, it would be the captain Roman Yossi getting his ninth goal of the season, giving the Preds a 5-2 lead. Now, it was Tommy Novak's pass that let 
Roman Yossi take the shot through traffic. The captain puts the National Predators up by three, five to two, late in the second period. 1834 of the second, Trenton's off the box, two minutes for high sticking. Zaros would have to come up with a big save on Caulfield, then come up with another big save on Caulfield, but it would be Montebo closing out the period with the biggest save of all as McDonough was crashing the net hard with a redirect right there at 1959. Referees and officials let the period expire, and we hit the end of the second period. The Preds are out shooting Montreal 25 to 23. 13 seconds into the third period. It's going to be at Comb off the box. Two minutes for high staking. So on the continuation of the power play for Montreal, now they will add to that a five on three for a total of 19 seconds. Overall, strong PK because the National Press not only survived the five on three, but they go on to kill off the five on four as well. 258 in the third period. Harris is off the box. Two minutes for hooking. And then Evans is off the box. Two minutes for tripping on the captain, Romaniosi. This would lead to a five-on-three in favor of the National Predators for 42 seconds, and that's where Matt Duchesne is cashing in. It was his 11th goal of the season. It was the captain, Romaniosi, with a perfect pass to the low circle across the slot to the back post, and Matt Duchesne cashing in 6-2 to two in favor of the National Predators. Over the next several shifts, several minutes, the Preds were controlling everything. As a matter of fact, the ice was completely tilted. Numerous scoring chances. Tanner Janot had numerous scoring chances but could not cash in at any point. Point in time. As a matter of fact, I made the note that it could be 7 8 9 to 2 at this point. But 16 59 of the third period, Gallagher picks up his fourth goal of the season. Montreal now down 6 to 3. It was a broken stick, a turnover, and a backdoor play that led to a roof job. And just like that, a garbage goal for the Montreal Canadiens into the back of the net. Carrier was the one who ended up with the broken stick. That would be your final score, though. 6 to 3 is the final couple of minutes would expire with nothing else going on. The National Press would actually generate a couple of more good scoring chances there in the final minutes. The Preds would outshoot Montreal for the game 34-27, to but most importantly, would secure the two points on home ice. Overall, a rather easy victory for the Nashville Predators team. They got up 3-0. They won the game 6-3. to They gave up a soft goal. They gave up a garbage goal, but overall, the Nashville Predators were in control of this entire game, and there were only brief stretches uh, just after turnovers or things like that where the Nashville Predators found themselves in, in any danger at any time. But they controlled the game for about 85, 90% of the play in this one. That's why they come away with a 6-3 victory. And it's good to see the National Predators putting up another nice large goal total against another bad team. So the National Predators now have continued this roller coaster schedule. First place teams, last place teams. And they've been able to secure a couple of victories. Chicago, that is a good victory. Anaheim, that's a good victory. And now this is a, another good victory against the Montreal Canadiens. Now the National Predators are going to be tested very heavily on this upcoming road trip. And they started out with a first place team in the Carolina Hurricanes, a place where the Preds have had incredible difficulty in the last few years. And I guess this this particular Carolina Hurricanes grouping, uh, the National Predators have definitely struggled in that last couple of years. That's the Rebirth Sports full game recap. We got the Renegades, uh, Puck, including Sean C. Smith and Brian Baston coming up next. I'll give you some analysis and then we'll talk about some stats as well. It's coming up next right here on the Renegades of Puck podcast.